Hi, this is Carl, and this is another SOP video for many service providers. So this is the third video on KPIs, Key Performance Indicators. And today I want to talk about why we're going to look at all of this stuff, and in particular on the leading and lagging indicators, as well as the green light, yellow light, red light mechanism that you can use to make sure you're on track. So the question is why? Like why put out all of this effort to track these KPIs? Well, the answer is your mission, your vision, right? You are going to measure your progress toward your vision, right? That is what your mission is all about, is making progress towards your vision. So how do KPIs help us do that? Let's look at some sales indicators and talk about that flow or progress toward your goals. So here's some sales indicators. First of all, most of these and most sales indicators are always leading indicators. What does that mean? Well, if you look at the number of letters sent, let's say you send out uh, 5,000 letters, okay, and then the number of calls made. Let's say, you know, talk to your sales people, but let's say that you want to contact everybody within two weeks. So you're only going to send out as many letters as you can actually follow up on with a phone call. So you have calls made and then appointments scheduled. So this is going to be your funnel, right? Uh, so many letters is going to turn into so many phone calls. It's going to turn into so many contacts. Then you're going to make appointments and then you're going to hold those appointments. You're going to make proposals. Some of them will be accepted, and at some point, you will make a sale. Now, all of these leading indicators are worthwhile. I would not measure all of them. Once you get those numbers down and you've figured it out and you know exactly how things work, then you could say, for every letter I send out, I get this many sales. Right? For every thousand letters, I get this many thousand sales. For every 10,000 letters, I get this many 10,000 sales. So these leading indicators over time can become accurate in terms of the flow of sales. So eventually you get to a sales amount. So sales, actual sales, is a lagging indicator. If all you had, the only thing you measured was sales, you could theoretically extrapolate most of the rest of this. You may not get the percentages exactly right, but you've got some idea of how it works. You already know this in your business, right? You sort of intuitively know if I made so many sales, it must have resulted from this earlier activity. Now, what happens after sales? Well, now we have to move over to the service department because a sale will result in a certain number of projects which will have tickets. Those will end up being hours in your ticketing system. So let's look at how sales turn into KPIs within the service department. Okay, here we are in the service department. Remember, one of my favorite KPIs is backlog. Backlog is simply a statement about how much time is in your system. So you take every single ticket, and you have an estimated time, and then when you add up all of that time, you have the amount of time that's in your system, and then you have a, a labor rate at which you can move time out of your system by working your technicians. So, what does it look like? Once you make a sale, that leads to work. And as I just said, so you get new clients, they have projects. The projects have tickets associated with them, the tickets have time associated with them, that leads to time in your backlog. Ticketing uh, uh, projects, whether you use the ticketing system or the project module, is going to be one set of new things that come out of sales. Again, over time, you're going to figure out what those percentages are. Maintenance is another thing. So new clients means more maintenance. Whether it is doing a regular monthly maintenance, let's say that's an hour and a half, or ongoing maintenance of desktops and other things. So you've got regular recurring maintenance. And again, that's a backlog that consistently over time should be the same month after month after month. And backlog, again, is the single most important thing that I would like to have you track within your service board. 
The second thing I mentioned is technician utilization. In other words, how billable is each technician? Let's take a second and look at what it means. So when I say billability, let's say that we've got this backlog. Let's look at our technicians. So here's a list of 10 technicians and they have various different kinds of billability. You've got a service manager at 40%. You've got other people all over. But the team as a whole is just over 75% billable. Here's what that means. That means that I have to buy all of those hours. I have to buy 100 hours to get 75 billable towards a service contract, towards a project, towards a managed service agreement. Okay, so if you look at how much backlog you have in your system, then you multiply it by the billability of your technicians. Now you've got that flow to determine whether or not this work can be done in the next week, the next two weeks, the next three weeks. And you see how that loops back around to the sales department because when they're selling something, they need to have these calculations so they can tell a prospect we can't get started this week, but I can help you in three weeks. We've got enough capacity to be able to do this job in a couple of days, right? So it all works together and it helps you understand how you manage not only the sales department, but all of the service delivery and how this project affects the billability and the utilization of all of your technicians and how quickly you can deliver service to the rest of what's in your pipeline. Okay, you got all that? Great. <laughs> now let's look at green light, yellow light, red light. Okay, so let's look at our three light system. This is really just a super broad indicator that we're either heading in the right direction or the wrong direction. So I've turned the stoplight upside down. So we got the green at the top and the red at the bottom. And so you have to figure out what are good indicators of where you want to go and how you're going to get there, right? So obviously if you're in the green region, you want to move things greener and greener and greener, right? But you need to have these very broad indicators to determine whether or not you're heading in the right direction. So let's just look at our technician billability, right? So when we look at technician utilization, we talked about this being in a certain range, right? So we know that our team's about 76% solid green, okay? So you need to have that range big enough so that it's very reachable under normal circumstances for your team. So 60% might seem like low billability, but really it's kind of in the range of acceptable. When people are below 60%, you need to coach them. You need to either train them because they don't know the technology or they're not working fast enough or they don't have the skill set, they don't have the tools they need. Whatever it might be, you got to figure out why those people are not performing the way they should. When they get below, in this case, let's say 40%, that's a, a bad, bad, bad news. If your team is in that range, you are losing money, right? So the red really needs to be Danger, Will Robinson, we are losing money. We are heading in the wrong direction. A lot of times when you start to measure your KPIs, you're going to find yourself in the red range. You need to work up to yellow and then work up to green. Green should be sustainable, right? So that's why this range doesn't go to 100%. It is humanly impossible for somebody to work 100%. They need direction. They legally get 15 minute break in the morning. Uh, there's going to be a meeting. There's going to be travel time. There's going to be things you can't bill a client for. So realistically, there is a cap to billability. And to be honest, uh, when people are working over 80% on any kind of a regular basis, they become irritable, grouchy. They snap at each other. They snap at clients. It's not a good scene. You don't want to be in there. You know, so you need to have a reasonable, sustainable rate. On the other hand, there's no reason for people to be in the 60s when they can be in the 70s, given the tools and the systems that you have in place. So again, what you see with KPIs is 
we could measure every single thing that we have available to us. We could measure a thousand variables. But if we pick the right key indicators, then they can drive lots of stuff in our business. The final thing I want to talk about is visibility. You need to post these things. There should be a dashboard with a big number about the billability or the utilization of your team. And in my opinion, each one of your technicians. You can have a board that's got technician utilization up on the board and they can look at it so that they can give each other some gentle ripping. Hey, Bob, I see you drop below 60. Can I help you out? Is there something I can do to make your life a little bit easier? You know, the, the team has to have goals that they can see. And every day, every week, they are very, very visible. Other things are easy to do in your ticketing system. So, for example, if you look at the total time it takes to close a ticket, do you have the average age of a ticket? When it's closed, you can indicate that number and then you say, OK, what was the average age of the tickets that we closed this week, last week, last month, last year, all time, right? That number is one that you can plot and you can manage. So only have a few indicators and make them very public, very visible so you can ask about them and everybody knows what that number means. And then you get the, the answer right away. It's also easy for everybody to see how you're doing. This is not some kind of secret test. This isn't like a, a pop quiz at school. This is your business. This is the way you're going to run things. And it needs to be open and public and completely visible. But you also only need to measure a handful of things. So again, you might pick five to ten things that you're going to measure in your company, but absolutely make it visible so that everybody knows how you're going. For Small Biz Thoughts, this is Carl Palachuk wishing you the best of luck in your managed service business. Please like, share, subscribe, and don't forget to ring that bell so you can be notified when we post a new video.